In this color grading tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create this nostalgic film look in your photos using Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the very first thing you want to do is just go ahead and choose a photo. And today I'm gonna to be working on this photo. And if you'd like to follow along with the same photo that I'm going to be using, go ahead to the link in the description. Right, firstly, once you've opened Lightroom, go ahead over to the develop panel on the right hand side, then drop down to where you can see it says basics. Now in basics, we want to go to the temperature first. I'm gonna go ahead and add in 10% temperature. Then what we're gonna do is drop down to contrast we'll drop that down by minus 20%. Then we want to drop the kind of overall exposure in the highlights. So we're gonna to go to the highlights here, and we're gonna drop that down by minus 40. And then we're gonna to go to the shadows and drop those down by minus 10. Then we're gonna do the same for the whites. We're gonna drop down the whites by minus 40. And then also with the blacks, we want to increase those blacks, create a bit more of a matte effect in the shadows. So we're gonna increase those by 50. Then with texture, because we wanna add this kind of film look, it has a lot of like grain in it. So we want to emphasize that grain so we can add in texture. So what we're gonna do is go to the texture slider here and we're gonna go ahead and add in 10% texture there. Then in clarity, because again, we're working on portrait photos and if you've ever followed my channel before, you'll know that I always like dropping clarity when we're working on portrait photos. It really does smooth out the skin tones. So we'll go to that clarity and we're gonna drop that down by around 10%, very subtle in this particular case. Then dehaze, we're gonna just get increase by five. Then with vibrancy, we're gonna increase that by 20. But to counterbalance that, because we wanna over-saturate the photo, what we're gonna do is go to that saturation here and I'll drop that down by minus 20. If you want to know the difference between vibrance and saturation, because there is a, a very small difference, go ahead to the link in the description. I've actually got a video dedicated to that topic. Right, so once we've done that, all we need to do is drop out the basics. And what we're gonna do now is open up the tone curve. So in the tone curve, you've got your parametric curve. So we're not gonna be selecting that. We're gonna go into the point curve, which is this one here. And what we want to do is create a bit more of a matte effect in the shadows. And I must say the point curve is probably the best way to create this. So what we're gonna do is go to the highlights first. We're gonna raise those up slightly. Go for something like that. Then what we're gonna do is go to the shadow areas and we're gonna drop that down slightly. So we're creating a little bit more of a natural contrast. But then in the black areas, so the far left-hand side, we're gonna go ahead and raise that up. So as long as you've got an input of zero, as long as that output is larger, what you're doing is removing black from the photo and you can see how it is impacting in the histogram. If I do before and then after, what we're doing is we're, we're crushing those blacks, we're removing them and turning them all into a matte effect. So it doesn't have true black now within this particular image, which is really nice. So we're gonna go for something like so. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump into the red, green, and blue point curve as well. So once you've gone over to the luminosity curve, which is this one, let's jump over to the reds. So what I like to do is just increase the reds in the highlights, then bring down the reds in the shadows, adding a little bit more cyan, and we're gonna bring down those blacks a little bit further. So we're gonna go for an effect similar to this. So we're bringing up the highlights ever so slightly, and then we're bringing down those shadows. We want to replicate that now in the green as well. So bring up the green in the highlights, but not by too much. And then bring down those shadows. So we're adding a bit more magenta into the shadows. You can see it appearing in the bottom of the photo here. And then add a little bit more shadows there. So a little bit more of the dark area. So go for something similar to this. Very, very subtle. Then we're gonna to go to the blue, last one. We're gonna again, raise up the blues ever so slightly. Then we're gonna bring down that in the shadows. Lovely, so we'll go for something a little similar to this. Bring down those blacks a little bit further. So we do, if the red channel, green channel, and blue channel should look very similar. So that's the effect that we're going for. So if I just show you the before and after of the tone curve, here is the before, and here is the after. As you can see, we've actually added a lot of color to this. So you can use it to change the luminosity, but you can also add in color using the point curve. It's incredibly powerful and highly recommend using it for your editing workflow. Okay, so once we've turned off the point curve, let's go down to HSL. Let's go ahead and change the hue first. Now, hue, saturation, limits control most of the color within the photo. It's an incredibly powerful tool and you can really utilize it to customize and manipulate the colors within your image. Okay, so let's go to hue first. What we want to do is go to the reds. We're gonna drop that down by minus 10. Then we're gonna to go to the oranges. We're gonna increase that by 15. Then we're gonna to go to the yellows. And we're gonna actually double that. We're gonna increase that by 30. 
30, make a bit more of an impact for change there. Then we're gonna go for the greens here and we're gonna drop that down by minus 50. But apart from that, we're gonna leave the aquas, blues, purples and magentas alone. Okay, so let's go over to saturation. Inside saturation, you want to go for minus 20 in the reds. You want to go plus 20 in the oranges because that's predominantly where the skin tones are found. We don't want to desaturate the skin tones too far. Uh, what we're going to do is go to the yellows. We're going to drop that down by minus 70. And then we're going to go to the greens. We're going to drop that down by minus 20. Then we're going to do minus 50 for the rest. So we're going to do minus 50 for the aquas. We're going to do minus 50 for the blues. We're also going to, well, actually with the purples, we only want to drop that down by minus 20 because purple and magentas can sometimes be found in skin tones. Again, we don't want to drop that down too low. We don't want to make him look ghostly at all. So you want to keep some saturation found within the skin tones. And mainly the bands you'll be affecting is obviously reds, oranges, and then purples and magentas. So we're going to go for minus 20 in that particular case. And the last one we're going to do is go over to luminance. We're going to do a similar chain. So we're not going to affect the reds. Jump straight to the oranges. We're going to increase 20 in the oranges. We're going to go to yellow. We're going to also increase 20 there. With the green, we're going to increase 30. So as you can see, that predominantly affects the plants there. I'm not sure, a very subtle change. And then what we're going to do is go to the blues and we're going to increase those by 30 as well. But again, we're going to leave the rest alone. If I just show you the before and after of the hue, saturation and lumens, if I do the before, do the after, as you can see, we're brightening up the photo, making a little bit more of a matte look. We're again, overemphasizing that look, which I think looks really nice in this particular style of photo. Okay, so we'll go down to color grading. Now we're only gonna affect the shadows and highlights in this particular case. So we're gonna go ahead and choose the hue first. We're gonna choose 20 in this particular case, which is like a reddish orange color. Then we're gonna go ahead and add in saturation. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in uh, for this particular case, I think around 15. But again, this is where, depending on what photo you're working on, depending on how much saturation you want to add and how strong the effect you want to apply. But I think 15 works in this particular photo quite nicely. It's the one that I would go for for a preset. Then what we're gonna do is go for the highlights. We're gonna add in a similar number. So we're gonna go and add in more of an orange, I would say. So let's go for 40. And then again, add in some saturation there. So I'm gonna go ahead in 10% uh, saturation. So just to go over, 20 color of hue with 15 saturation. We're skipping out the midtones, going straight to the highlights, 40 hue, and then 10% saturation you can see here. And the rest of that, you can pretty much leave alone. So we'll go ahead and turn off color grading. Okay, what we'll do is drop down to lens correction. And if you're making a preset, make sure you've got remove chromatic aberration and enabled profile corrections turned on. Now, I am working on a JPEG photo because obviously I got it from online, but if you're working on a raw photo, make sure those two buttons are ticked. Again, profile correction can help out, especially the lens optics. If it's got barrel distortion, pincushion distortion on vignetting, that will remove it from the photo. And again, also remove chromatic aberration. That's those like, hit fringes of color that you can sometimes see, what that will do is it will just remove that automatically. You can also go into manual mode if you're noticing a little bit more distortion or vignette, you can remove it, but to be honest, the profile corrections works really nicely. But because I'm working on a JPEG, we can't necessarily apply it. So, but if you are making a preset, make sure that's turned on just in case you ever work in RAW. And then what we're gonna do, last thing we're gonna do is go down to effects, we're gonna go down to where you can see it says grain, and we're gonna add in some grain. Now, this will really work if you want to add that kind of film look. Again, film's got a lot of grain in it, or it has that kind of vintage grain. We can actually replicate that in Lightroom Classic. And again, depending on what style you wanna go for. So I like going for 50% grain, I like going for 40% size, and then roughness I like keeping at 50. And you can see we've got that nice kind of grain coming in. It, I personally think it works really well with this style of photo, but if you wanna go for a slightly less of an effect or more of an effect, slide those styles around till you find out what works for you. Obviously, amount of grain, fairly obvious what it does. Size of grain, if you increase it, increase the physical pixel size of that grain, works well if you're working on a higher resolution image. And then obviously roughness is how much that grain is pronounced. So that is what the effect slider does. And again, you can always add in a post crop vignette, but in this particular case, I'm not going to do that. And there we go, guys. So what I can do is show you the before and after. So here is the before, you can see quite a flat image. And here is the after. And what we've done is we've added some warmth into those kind of whites that you can see here. We've added some grain, we've brightened and darkened certain parts of the photo using that hue, saturation, and luminance. Line. I really like this effect. And what I could do is show you the before and after side by side. So if I go ahead and zoom in, you can see 
There is the before and here is the after on the right hand side and I really like it. Let me show you a few other photos that I've done. So what I can do is show you, here is a photo I've edited with this preset. So if I do the before, and after, we've added that nice warm tone. It works really well with pavements. Again, it makes it almost look like you've shot it on a Polaroid or maybe an old Kodak camera. And then this is the last photo I'll show you as you've got this lovely photo here, I believe it's a uh, library. If I show you the before and I'll show you the after, it's added those nice colors to those grays. Again, makes a flat image look a lot, really, really nice. And of course, you can go ahead and add in other presets if you wanna add a filter over it to make it look even more grainy. That's all possible with this filter. But here's how you could create that nostalgic, warm film look to your photos. Here is the before, and here is the after. And if this particular tutorial helped you out, make sure to write it down in the comments below.